Man, I'm excited to be here. I mean, for me as a speaker, thinking about it now, I imagine a lot of speakers fantasize and vision seeing themselves on the TEDx stage and here I am. I mean, this is amazing. So the other day I was having lunch with my mentor. I love this guy. Now he's from Hawaii. And my mentor, he's always talking about his mentor, his uncle, and what he used to say in the native Hawaiian language. Aohe pao ko ike ko halau, which translates to realize not all learnings come from school. There are learnings all around us if you quiet down and open up your mind. Because when you change the way you look at things, things you look at start to change. So as I'm listening to my mentor in this moment right now, I'm recalling examples of this in my past. Now back in the day, I played a lot of football. Plus, naturally people are curious about this ring, so it makes sense that I would tell you a story from back then. Gets deep now, picture it. We're about three quarters of the way into the 2005 NFL season. Thinking back to when the season began, the Pittsburgh Steelers, we had big hopes, high expectations for this season. See, last year in 2004, we had the best record in the league with 15 wins and only one loss. Our quarterback was the rookie of the year, and our team made it all the way to the AFC Championship game, just one step away from winning us, getting to the Super Bowl. Not yet, though, thanks to some guy named Brady from up in New England. <laughs> that guy, Brady. I don't know if you guys have heard of this dude, Brady, but this was a long time ago, so I digress. Now, we're 11 games into the 2005 season, and we just lost our third consecutive game. We realized that if we lose one more, we're mathematically eliminated from playoff contention, and our Super Bowl dreams will be over. I mean, all of a sudden, it's like Chicken Little. The sky is falling. Everybody's turning against us. The fans are panicked. The media is like, the Steelers are way too deep in a hole right now. They're out. But of course, the players were saying all the right things. I remember saying to a journalist, hey, relax. We got this. Take a deep breath. We'll just go deeper into the season one game at a time. Now, our coach, Hall of Fame inductee, Hall, head coach, Bill Cowher. Now, coach, he's focused in. He's dialed in. He has a deeper understanding of how everyone's feeling right now. I mean, there's a reason this guy's a Hall of Fame coach. You know, I remember clear as day that meeting after that third loss with Coach, because I envisioned Coach would come in and give it to us good, really tear us a new one for not living up to our potential. You know, I was genuinely surprised at what I heard in this speech, because the learnings I gained from this talk completely changed my perspective as to what it means to win in life going forward. So Coach comes into the meeting and everyone went silent and held their breath in anticipation for what was about to happen. So coach stood in front of the group and he said, guys, thinking about where we're at in this season right now, realize you don't know what you don't know. And believe it or not, it's what you don't know that you don't know that's running the show right now. And think about this for a moment. Since you don't know what you don't know, how do you know what you believe you do know is right? Don't answer me now, just relax and consider what I'm saying. You don't know what you don't know. I told you it gets deep, right? So, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm always flattered when I meet new people. They seem impressed. I mean, thinking about my NFL background, the fact that I was drafted by my home hometown, played eight years in the NFL, and won the Super Bowl playing for my favorite team. I mean, think about it. Being drafted by your childhood team and bringing a world championship back to your hometown is the kind of thing that if you weren't sitting here now focused in as you're listening, if you didn't see me standing here as living proof, most people would say it feels like a dream or a fantasy. Now just imagine this fantasy is your actual experience. Ooh, shoot. Skip, there we go, skip the slide. Just imagine if this, if this fantasy is your actual experience. You know, grateful as I feel right now, this is an actual experience from my past. <laughs> it's really funny. People are always curious and intrigued. I mean, most people don't get to play pro sports, so when I think about it right now, it makes sense. You know, I just picture them asking themselves, and I've heard people say to me things like, wow, that is amazing. You mean to tell me you were drafted by your hometown, 
played eight years in the NFL, you were born in Pittsburgh, and you won the Super Bowl, that is incredible. You know, I wonder what that would feel like to win the Super Bowl. I bet that feels spectacular, right? It's, it's funny because winning the Super Bowl is a feeling that you are already familiar with deep down. I mean, it's a feeling you felt before that you're very intimately familiar with. Just think about the memories, just go back, we all got memories, go back in your mind and remember those times in your past where you felt those butterflies, that feeling of excitement in your stomach, oh, that sensation, the moments that made your pulse race and your breath shallow, you hear your heart beating in your ears, see those things now. Things that took you to levels of pleasure, fulfillment and satisfaction that felt so right, it almost feels wrong. You know exactly what I'm talking about, the kind of thing that spins around and around in your mind like a vinyl record, obsessing. You try to stop thinking about this, recalling it again and again, obsessing about it. You obsess about this because it feels so good. You just want to feel this way all the time, forever. Now, if you can imagine a memory just like this, congratulations. You know exactly what it feels like to win the Super Bowl. You know, I imagine that all of us have wondered at some point what our full potential is in our lives and in our careers. Now, when you think about it, for an athlete to become a world champion, it makes total sense. That would be what I consider my ultimate success. But what about startup founders and entrepreneurs? I mean, each one of us have a picture in our mind of what we believe will be perfect, the ultimate success. You know, and so when I deal with clients, this is what I point out to them. That's your Super Bowl result. I mean, just imagine feeling that feeling in your career, right? And so most people don't realize that being an entrepreneur or an aspiring NFL athlete are very similar in nature. I mean, think about it. You've got a dream, a vision, something bigger than yourself that you feel a burning desire to experience. Your friends and family, they think you're crazy because you're attempting to do something that most people don't have the intestinal fortitude to even attempt and those that do typically fail in their efforts. But here you are, working at a day after day, holding that picture in your mind, sacrificing blood, sweat, and tears to make what they say is impossible your reality. Am I right? Now who did I just describe? An entrepreneur or an aspiring NFL athlete? See, my job today is a keynote speaker, a mindset coach for entrepreneurs, startup founders, C-level executives. One question that I get asked a lot, and I just remember a client saying this the other day, they'll say things like, yes, that Super Bowl feeling, that's what I want. Why can't I feel that? What's stopping me from feeling this feeling in my career? I wanna feel this way about my business and bring that feeling into my family. How do I do that? <laughs> Developing this Super Bowl feeling in your life is a lot simpler and easier than you might think. How easy? It's kind of like The Wizard of Oz. I know you guys have seen the movie, right? Think about it. Dorothy, she's wanting to go home and believing that getting what she deeply desires is a lot to take in. Now, you guys can envision the scene right now. You remember she had the power the whole time. She had the power in those slippers, right? So even though you know this story, perhaps you never thought of it like this. She had the power, yes. Recognize now that all she needed were the basic instructions of how that power works. All of a sudden you realize that getting exactly what you desire, whether that's going home to Kansas or winning the Super Bowl, you realize now how simple and easy it can be to be, do, and have whatever ambitious goal or experience of pleasure you deeply desire. Now, thinking about what your goals are, when you think about the things that are lofty and ambitious, that seem just out of your reach, perhaps you just don't know what you don't know. Imagine if you did know how the situation would just look different, more achievable, because when you change the way you look at things, things you look at start to change. So. Thinking about it now, it really comes down to understanding 
that you don't know what you don't know. The world, the universe is too infinite. There's too many perspectives. So when you're saying things to yourself like, I can't, I'm not, maybe it makes more sense to be curious and ask yourself, what do I not know that I don't know? It gets deep now. So let's get deeper into it. Now, one thing that people are always curious about when they hear about my football past, you know, they'll say things to me like, <laughs> this guy said the other day, he said, wow, to make it to the pros in the last eight years, that's tough to do. What is it, like 1% of high school athletes make it all the way to the professional level? That means that you must be one of the best of the best. You had to compete against and beat out a lot of people. Pro sports is so competitive. <laughs> competitive. That's funny to me. I can appreciate this perspective. Making it to the pros is statistically rare. You know, it's funny. People are always surprised to discover that even though I lived it, I played in the NFL, I see things completely different. Now, this perspective on what it takes to accomplish something so rare, what I want to share with you is a way of looking at things, a mindset that anyone has the ability to adopt within their life, anyone. And life can seem competitive, but when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at start to change. So this is what I suggest. In the world of entrepreneurship, business, what I learned through playing sports is that sometimes the key to winning the competition is to not compete. I know, it sounds counterintuitive, and I know that that's the way you're used to looking at things. The fact is, you don't know what you don't know, and let's just change the way we're looking at this. So, you know, thinking about it now, when you think about what is it gonna take to create that positive shift in my life, you know, it's really getting deeper into the aspects that, hmm, how am I looking at my situation? You know, so, a lot of times when people talk about competition and competing, you know, there's a lot of presuppositions in our language. When you think about the word compete, there's certain things that I must assume in order to make sense of what I call a competitive mindset. So what I want to put you guys in touch with is the difference between a competitive mindset, ooh, I'm on the wrong slide, a competitive mindset and a creative mindset. But before I do, let me get deeper into looking at the situation different. So let's talk about emotions. Most people don't realize that emotions are just energy in motion. Think about it, emotions. Emotions are a tool that obviously everybody has, yet most people don't know that they don't know the basic instructions of how these emotions work. I'll go deeper. Emo language and words. Now words always fascinate me, always fascinate me. You know why? Because words trigger emotions. I mean, words are magic. Think about it, that's why they call it spelling. I mean, most people don't recognize or realize this, but the words in our mind do not describe our experience. The words in our mind actually create the emotions that we feel. So whatever you're feeling right now, recognize you're creating this feeling. I mean, think about it, there's nobody in my mind but me, right? So energy in motion. And so thinking about that, Think about a word that comes up a lot when you think about sports and business, compete. Competing in business or creating your desired results in life. So that's where I wanna get into the idea of the competitive versus creative mindset. Now, what is a competitive mindset? A competitive mindset is an I win, you lose mindset. Now, life and business can seem competitive like sports, perhaps, Maybe you've just been playing the wrong sport, thinking of it like boxing or MMA, you know, where you have to beat down the competition in order to claim your position as the winner. You know, the way I look at it is perhaps I've been playing the wrong sport. You know, a lot of times people will say, yeah, but life is competitive. Business is, com have you ever read Charles Darwin? I'm like, relax. I recognize this the way you're used to looking at things, and I respect your model of the world. So let's say, for discussion's sake, that 
It's competitive like sports. Perhaps we're playing the wrong sport and maybe slides are a little out of order, but I digress. Don't worry about it because I'm good like that. Anyway, <laughs> the bottom line is maybe we're playing the wrong sport. So here's the thing. When you're in a competitive mindset, competitive mindset presupposes my focus is outside. I'm focused on everyone and everything except for me. I'm focused on my perceived competition. The other team, that coworker who also wants that promotion, that new startup in the same industry as mine. When I'm focused outside, this is nature. Most people don't recognize what that means. How are we as the human animal? When I'm focused outside, I'm instantly perceiving a threat at an unconscious level. And when I'm feeling threatened, that's going to evoke the emotion of fear. It's a science now. It evokes, it evokes the emotion of fear. Now, fear is our primal instinct that puts us into that fight or flight response. You know? Now, it really goes back to pre-civilization before man, when, when man lived in the mountains, the plains, the jungles, amongst the other animals. Now, we human beings can't fight big predators, lions, tigers, bears, etc. So how do we survive? It's our emotions and our ability to think as human beings. A combination of emotion and intellect is what's kept us safe and comfortable on this planet this whole time. And so really what it comes down to is what I call the laws of nature. And the thing about the laws of nature is they are inarguable. They really are. It's the kind of thing where even if you don't believe in these laws, you still are feeling the effects of it. So when you think of natural laws, think of gravity. You can't see gravity, I can't touch gravity, but even if you don't believe in gravity, you're still feeling the effects of gravity. And my teacher from Hawaii, he teaches about another natural law called the law of cause and effect. Now, the law of cause and effect, whatever inner monologue is going on in my mind is going to create an effect on what I experience right now. So like, for example, imagine if I came across a skunk in the woods and I'm focused outside, I'm focused on that perceived threat. When you're focused, when you're lit up with fear, even just a little bit of fear, your ability to think shuts off. I mean, think about it. If I'm faced with a threat, <laughs> there's no time to think. There's no time for fun. There's no time to find a mate to reproduce. All I'm focused on right now is survival. And my best, greatest resources, my emotions are not available to me when I'm feeling even a little bit of fear. Just a little bit, and I might be missing something. So this is why competitive mindset doesn't necessarily work when you, when you think about creating the results you want in life. So my Hawaiian mentor, he talks about another natural law, cause and effect. Now cause and effect, as I explained, is whatever's going on inside is going to create an effect of how I experience life outside. So it's always important to recognize, hmm, where am I focused? Am I focused outside or am I focused enjoyably inward on the idea of getting my specific Super Bowl level result? Really what it comes down to is recognizing this. In the competitive mindset, I'm focused outwards. If I'm focused outwards, I perceive a threat. I perceive a threat, I'm feeling fear, and when I'm feeling fear, I can't think. My mind shuts off. That's why I suggest we get a creative mindset. Now, a creative mindset enables us to focus on the resources we already have and get more out of those resources. So again, in the competitive mindset, a lot of people, business is competitive like sports, perhaps you're playing the wrong sport. Perhaps you're playing the wrong sport. If it's anything like sports, I would say it's more like Olympic swimming. Now notice how the sport is played, where everybody's in the same lane, in the lane that they're supposed to be in. Now, you guys know who Michael Phelps is, right? The most decorated Olympian the world's ever seen. Now, he's got 82 medals across international competitions, 65 gold, 28 Olympic. Now, I love this guy because his mindset and the way he approaches his competition on game day. So, when you think about it, I can see him right now, you know, with those big noise-canceling headphones, his hood pulled over his head. Recognize he's shutting out the world, turning his attention inside in preparation for this next event. Now, 
Even though everyone's in the pool with the competition, notice how the game's played. Everyone stays in their own lane. Nobody's impeding the progress of anyone else. So Michael Phelps has got all his focus inside on his motivation, his inspiration, his passion, his desire to be the best at what he does, and he's thinking about one thing. How do I get from where I want, where I am to where I want to be? How do I get from this end of the pool faster than I've ever done it before? And while everybody else is in a competitive mindset, focusing on their competition, what's Mike doing? Where's Mike? Mike's at the other end of the pool, splashing around like a two-year-old in a kiddie pool, <laughs> celebrating his latest victory. It's just another day at the office for him, right? Recognize that's a competitive mindset. While everybody else is focused outside as to what they want to do, Mike is focused on the career and legacy that he's building. That's a creative mindset. That's how you create that Super Bowl feeling. Now, thinking back, I was having lunch with my mentor, and he's talking about, you know, all these different things and different learnings. So, you know, that 2005 season, I go back, all of a sudden, I'm recalling it. Just thinking about it brings those butterflies up. My heart rate increases, and I'm looking up in the stands through all that falling confetti, and I can see the tears of joy down the Steeler Nation faithful's face. You know, and all the, all the energy I put into it since I was seven, the East End of Pittsburgh, maintaining my vision of success and putting everything I am into this so I could feel like the king for one day. You know, and just remembering how we felt in that meeting with Coach and what he talked about remembering how we felt when we lost to the Patriots and didn't make it to the Super Bowl, reminding us that we lost that one game in the second week of the season, went on to win 15 straight games before falling just short. So Coach said, guys, you're saying all the right things and I recognize you're feeling fear right now. Just, and that's okay. But if we continue to focus out there on the naysayers, what they're saying in the papers, watching SportsCenter, that's what has us feeling like our goal is slipping away again. You guys won 15 games straight, you can win nine in a row right now. You've been here before. We just gotta preserve the learnings from that past experience and focus inside on who we know we are. Just picture the party back in Pittsburgh, the parade through downtown, right? Just picture all of that. And notice how that feels inside. Just focus on that feeling and let's go make history and that's what we did. Something that was statistically rare by taking a Michael Phelps approach. Now, when I think back to lunch with my mentor, he always talking about his uncle, but this is what he said about his dad and what he believes is the, the secret to creating your future. When you think about creating the life that you want, being, doing, and having the exact experience you want, it's not, if you want to change what's going on around you, focus on what's going on within you. Use the power within you. You are the power. You have the power to make the impossible possible. In, if you continue to stay focused out there, it's going to be tough. But your only focus should be on how good can I be? How good can I be? Because whatever you think you are, you're so much more than that. I just feel really grateful for all the coaches and mentors that I've had in my life that show me that I am in control of my life. A kid from Pittsburgh gets drafted by his hometown team and brings a championship home. Whatever you guys think you are, you are so much more than that. Success is simple. Click three times and go home to a hero's welcome, living the life you've always dreamed of. Success is simple if you know the basic instructions. Mahalo, aloha, and thank you.